Welcome to another episode of SpaceX in the News. My name is Kevin, and today we're taking a look at the ever-increasing progress being made with Starship. I'll also interview a very, very special guest. She made me give her multiple varies concerning the fate of the local Boca Chica residents. Then we'll talk about Crew Dragon, Starlink, and some upcoming missions. Let's get started. The workers at the SpaceX construction site in Cocoa, Florida are still cracking away at their version of Starship, also known as the Mark II prototype, and they're not far behind their Mark I predecessor in Boca Chica. A new port has been noticed in the vehicle's nose cone, but I'm not really sure what it could be for. It's much too high to be an umbilical port for the LOX tanks. Maybe it's for the RCS thruster blocks, but you would think there'd be more than one if that were the case. Your guess is as good as mine so long as you're not thinking it's a window. That'd be a terrible guess. Furthermore, two rings have been mated and are on standby to receive the upper bulkhead for the LOX tank, after which they will place it on top of the towering hull section it's currently sitting next to. This is what we just witnessed happen last week with the Mark I Starship in Boca. SpaceX is so far out in this commercial space race that literally their only competition are themselves. But speaking of the competing team in Boca Chica, they just received some new goodies in the mail including a brand new and ginormous liquid oxygen tank at the launch pad, because Starship will hold plenty more liquid oxygen than Starhopper did. Also, a transport crawler arrived on a flatbed truck that will most likely transport Starhopper away from the pad and Starship to it. That windbreaking hangar has been fully skinned, and what some are speculating to be a piece for attaching a canard fin to Starship is being placed on the replacement nose cone section. SpaceX will cut on the yellow line shown here to remove the piece they've had issues attaching the nose cone to, and replace it with the one shown in the previous image. After that, a huge crane that has been stationed on site will lift the top half of Starship and place it upon the lower half. Alex Delderfield rendered an image of what Starship may look like once the two halves are mated. You can see the canards up top and the fins slash legs down below. And then Alex decided, what the hey, I'll render a full Starship Super Heavy. Take that. There's a little pee coming out of me right now. The Starship launch pad is situated just under two miles away from the local residents, who have often wondered since SpaceX arrival five years ago, what will happen to their homes. After all, if one Raptor engine can ignite a wildfire that can spread for acres and acres, imagine what a launch vehicle could do with 30-some Raptor engines. Well, SpaceX finally broke their silence with the locals and sent each household a letter with an unnegotiable offer to purchase their property at three times its value, as well as granting them VIP access to all future launch events. And SpaceX is giving them two weeks to make a decision. CBS put together a really well done segment on the matter where they interviewed some of the locals, including Maria Pointer and Austin Bernard, as well as the local judge who has in the past favored SpaceX as a means to benefit the entire community. When I was down in Boca Chica visiting Starhopper and Starship last month, I asked Maria how she felt about her predicament, and then again now that she received a letter from SpaceX, and she only needed one word to describe what she was feeling. If you'd like to watch the whole CBS story, I'll put a link in the description. Word is getting around that not everyone is going to be accepting SpaceX's offer, and while some people will certainly make out getting three times their property value, others will certainly not. I've been speaking back and forth with the locals for the better part of a year now, and the local government hasn't shown these Boca residents any support. So unfortunately, it wouldn't surprise me if eminent domain came up in the future if people just brush off SpaceX's offer. But what do I know? I'm not an attorney, but I am married to one, so I asked her to join us and answer my poorly phrased questions. So I'm here with Carrie, my wife, and she's a lawyer, believe it or not. <laughs> so she wins a lot of arguments in our house. All of them. She graduated Val Victoria, so she's very smart. The only unsmart decision that she made, unsmart, marrying him. was marrying me. Let me ask you, um, for those villagers that refuse to move based on SpaceX's first offer, uh, what do you think will happen? You think eminent domain might be a likely you know, scenario? Not in the near future. Okay. I think what would happen next is SpaceX would try to come back to the negotiating table and you know try to get a deal done civilly and respectfully versus trying to go through the government arm of the state. But in their letter to the residents, they specifically said this wasn't a negotiating thing. Everything's negotiable. <laughs> this is the lawyer saying it. So they're bluffing. SpaceX is bluffing. We're calling you out, SpaceX. What? You would never win in court. <laughs> <laughs> okay. She says that to me in every argument. That's how she wins, apparently. It's not admissible evidence. Okay. So um, what about the the local government, the county, who always seems to be on the side of SpaceX and doesn't seem to be too friendly or kind to the local villagers? you think that has some sort of play in favor of SpaceX then? Well, I don't know all the facts, so I'll preface my answer on that. But 
essentially the county could exercise condemnation proceedings, but in order to do that, you would have to be able to provide um, reason they're taking your land is for a public use. And I don't practice in Texas and I'm not licensed in Texas, but from what I looked at kind of briefly, their eminent domain proceedings are governed by statute actually. So the county is limited to certain enumerated um, instances where they're allowed to exercise that power. And I'm not sure if SpaceX and their expansion of their facility at this time would qualify under one of those provisions. So right now I'd say the residents are in a pretty good spot because they can stay where they want and they have the ability to negotiate again when the two weeks expires and you get another letter because that's a new offer. Okay, so if you were on the other side, Al, if you were working for SpaceX as one of their attorneys and you were trying to deal with these rebellious, evil people in the village that wanted to actually keep their homes, how dare they? <laughs> How would you treat this such delicate situation? Uh, I think SpaceX is handling it in a very civil and respectful way. And uh, personally, I think they're being more than generous because under assuming that it did get to a point where eminent domain or the exercise of eminent domain powers by the county would come to fruition, as a resident, you would only be entitled to just compensation, which under the law is generally your fair market value of your property. And at this time, SpaceX is offering you three times that. So yeah, it's an independent appraiser, but you know you could probably negotiate that you could have an appraiser do it as well. And then you could split the difference. So they're doing what you would do? No, I mean, I would probably do, I don't know if I'd do it exactly that way, but yeah, I mean, I think the way that they're handling it is very, respectful how would you do it would you offer three times the fair market value right off the bat well i don't know what the fair market value is because i didn't see that part of the document <laughs> but they also provided their documents with the letters from my understanding which is good because they spacex you know presented an offer and presented documentation with it so i mean i definitely would have done it that way as well would you have said in your letter that this is not negotiable or you... everybody says that in their letters but everything is negotiable you and if you don't guys. like the offer, just don't respond to it because it'll expire in two weeks, according to the letter. So then what do you think will happen? You'll get another letter. <laughs> you, know, you think they'll get yeah. another letter? There you go. You'll get another letter. Yeah. Stand by for that letter. Uh, if I'm right and they get another letter, I want to be the honorable mention in like two weeks when the new letter comes she out. She wants to be an honorable mention. Mm -hmm. Listen to this one. <laughs> she might be a, a all-star lawyer, but she, does she deserve honorable mention status? I don't think so. I, I mean, I'm sorry. Yes, you do. Well, thanks for stopping by. Why do all you people watch him? <laughs> That's a fair question. Why aren't you wearing your wedding ring? Back to you, Kevin. Thank you so much for that awesome interview, Kevin. And thank you, Carrie, I guess. But hey, if SpaceX approached me and offered me three times what my property's worth, I'd be like, woohoo, I'm moving to Florida. I'm going to the coast. I'm gonna watch some rockets fly over the ocean from my backyard. Peace out, Ohio. That's the American dream, according to Unky Kev Kev. Moving on to Crew Dragon news, NASA's commercial crew program shared this footage of Dragon's parachute test. While similar video has been shared many times in the past, I still like to share these because, well, it's parachutes. And parachutes are fun. SpaceX and NASA also won an Emmy. That's right, an Emmy, like from the movies or something, for their coverage of the Demo-1 mission that took place in March of this year. What I think is actually pretty ironic is that many people who I spoke to during the broadcast actually noticed a downgrade in quality from the SpaceX stream that they're used to, because I'm pretty sure if I remember right, it was broadcasted in 720. But that's not what they got the Emmy for. They got it for the immersive audience participation that took place throughout the mission, which took years of preparation. So congratulations, NASA, that's really cool. I didn't know the government could qualify for an Emmy. Moving on to Starlink, financial analysts at Morgan Stanley Research have projected that SpaceX may be worth $120 billion if the Starlink constellation works the way it's planned to work. However, in a bear case scenario, meaning if all doesn't go well, SpaceX's worth could drop down to $5 billion. The private company is currently preparing for their Starlink 1 mission, and Andrew Stoltz on Twitter shared a video he captured of what is believed to be a fairing half for this launch traveling toward the Cape. Media accreditation was just opened up for the press, and the email states that the mission will be a go for no earlier than October. Rumor is the specific no earlier date is actually October 17th, followed by November 4th for Starlink 2 and late November for Starlink 3. Gwen Shotwell, president of SpaceX, recently stated that SpaceX would like to launch up to four Starlink missions by the end of the year. 
Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for tuning in. And until the next one, Godspeed. Well, <laughs> these SpaceX and the news episodes are made possible by the generous donations of my Patreon members. And if you'd like to see even more space eccentric content, consider becoming a Patreon yourself. Even a dollar a month will get you access to exclusive videos not available here on YouTube. There's a link in the description. And God bless my friend. <laughs>